The Ford Mustang is one of the most famous automotive nameplates of all time, right up there with the Chevrolet Corvette and the Porsche 911. So what happens when the Blue Oval takes it, gives it four doors, available all-wheel drive, and an all-electric powertrain? One word, controversy. This is the second member of the Mustang family, and it's called Mach-E. We're driving a premium trim with the available all-wheel drive and extended range battery, giving it a total range of about 270 miles and 346 total horsepower. But before we get into any of those details, we gotta have a look at this thing. So since the Mach-E is electric, we took it to the capital of electric vehicles in Southern California. Welcome to Playa Vista. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we are shooting on a random street in Playa Vista. We're gonna wave hello to the FedEx truck and we're gonna move on with our lives. Starting from the front, I think this thing does a good job of looking like a Mustang. I am gonna say though, uh, my video editor is gonna agree with me, the mustache up front does not work. I, I wish that they would have made it a full circle. They would have made it like a pony on a track or something like that. It just doesn't work. It looks a little bit too much like a Fu Manchu. Not a huge fan. What I do love is these headlights. So if you look closely, you can see that there are three individual light elements that act as daytime running lights. And that's a very deliberate callback to the three elements on the back of the Mustang as well. Tri-bar headlights have been a signature for the Mustang ever since 1964. And this thing takes full advantage of that. Ford wanted to keep the side view of the Mach-E very simple and very clean. That's why you're not gonna see too many uh, pony emblems or anything like that. You do get a trim level down here. This is a Mach-E 4X. Four means all wheel drive, X means extended range battery. They also gave the Mach-E electric door handles. You press this button and a little plunger inside the door pops it open a little bit and then you just pull with this little thumb handle and you're on the road. Weirdly, they didn't do the same in the rear because their market research suggested that people would press the button and use the side of the door to open it up anyway, so they gave the door a little rubber pad on the inside right here. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love the lack of symmetry. I think if there's a little handle on the front, there should be a little handle on the back, but there's no denying that it does give the thing slightly more of a coupe appearance than if it had door handles front and rear. Speaking of a coupe-like experience, the designers played a very good trick by painting the roof panel black and giving the thing a very strong body line that cuts down here. If you take a step back, you kind of think that the roof looks a little bit lower than it actually is if you're just looking at the body color element. It's a really clever visual trick that makes it look lower to the ground without actually sacrificing much in the way of interior space. This is arguably the Mach-E's most controversial angle. From the rear three quarter, there is no hiding that this is a hatchback, not a two door coupe. You do get some really lovely Mustang rear haunches over the rear wheels, but it's not quite enough to hide this thing's crossover styling. However, that pays off with the biggest cargo hold I can think of on any Mustang. There's a lot of space back here, and if you need even more, the load floor is adjustable. In addition to the space back here, this being an electric car, you also get a frunk. This is the cabin of the Mustang Mach-E, arguably the most modern interior that Ford has ever designed. At the center is a 15.5 inch vertically oriented touchscreen that handles all of the vehicle's secondary controls. And right in front of the driver is a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster. Let's dig in a little bit deeper into the tech. This is the default view when you turn the car on, but if you want something different, you just tap your profile icon in the top of the screen. From there, you can go to um, radio, you can go to Apple CarPlay. There's also built-in um, Waze navigation and a bunch of other features. You can dismiss this by either swiping up or tapping the icon right there. And then just like your smartphone, it also remembers the apps that you were using most recently and allows you to kind of switch back and forth between them immediately. If you really want to delve into the vehicle settings, all you do is you tap a little Mach-E icon in the top left corner. There you can change the drive modes. Right now it's in Unbridled, which is kind of a cheeky reference to the car's Mustang heritage. There's also Engage and Whisper. One of my favorite features is the one pedal drive, which you can activate here. In Unbridled mode, that means that it has the most aggressive regeneration that the car can muster, which is a lot of fun. You can also engage the surround view camera. There's the intersection camera. And then if you want to get into the nitty gritty, you can go into settings. And that's where you'll find things like sound settings, personal profiles, um, vehicle particulars, stuff like that. At the very bottom of the screen is the climate control, which stays in place no matter what you're doing up top. You can access a pretty nifty and responsive slider for the temperature settings, turn on automatic seat heating, the steering wheel heating, adjust the fan speed, and so on and so forth. And even though the whole thing is a touchscreen, you do get a physical volume knob that protrudes from the screen itself. 
Speaking of volume, the Mustang Mach-E also gets an optional B&O Play soundbar in front of the front passenger, and if you squint a little bit, it looks like the twin cowl motif that you find on other Mustangs. The Mach-E doesn't get a head-up display, so all of the pertinent information is kept right in front of the driver in this digital instrument cluster. That includes things like the state of charge, the overall range available, and a ground speed indicator. As an electric crossover, the Mustang does a pretty good job. I really love the one pedal driving, which means that you can just pretty much back off the accelerator as you're coming up to a stop and the brake regen will step in to bring you to a full and complete stop without any intervention from the driver whatsoever. It's a really nice feature that definitely saves a lot of electricity. As you might expect of an electric vehicle, there's no underhood racket at all. It's a very quiet place to spend time. In addition to that, there's not a whole lot of tire noise or wind roar to interrupt either. That's kind of a problem with other electric cars where once you remove the engine noise, your brain becomes attuned to every other sound the car makes. Not necessarily an issue in the Mustang though, which is a definite plus. There's also a lot of room. I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of space and I can sit behind myself in the rear seat as well. It's a very comfortable, quiet interior, something that can't be said of every other electric car on the market, particularly the examples from Tesla. The other thing that this vehicle has in common with electric vehicles is lots and lots of torque. We're getting on the highway right now, no sweat, tons of power, very easy to access. This accelerator is kind of an on-off switch because of that one pedal. When you mat it down, it moves, and then as soon as you kind of are up to speed, you can take your foot off the throttle a little bit and get a little bit of the regenerative braking coming into play. The one pedal does get a little bit annoying on the highway. If I'm to just completely lift off the accelerator, we slow down a lot, but it's very easy to turn off. You just hit a button on the control stack and you can glide down the freeway like you were in any other vehicle. There are some issues though. It's got a big vertical touchscreen, and I tend to think vertical screens are a problem in cars because if you're doing something down in the bottom, it forces you to pull your eyes further away from the road than if the screen is kind of high and within your field of view. So for example, when you're doing things like fine adjustments to the climate controls, I'm really not comfortable with how much I have to take my eyes off of the road for something like that. Some exciting news for tech junkies, the Mach-E will be available with Ford's Active Driving Assistant. Now you can option it in your Mach-E right now and Ford will roll out the software in an over-the-air update sometime next year. The Active Driving Assistant is going to be Ford's answer to the Tesla Autopilot or Cadillac Super Cruise, enabling completely hands-off-the-wheel driving in controlled freeway situations. Quick caveat, we've only had a few hours behind the wheel of the Mustang Mach-E this afternoon, but on first impression, it looks like it could be a very compelling alternative to other electric vehicles. Whether that's gonna be enough to satisfy Mustang purists remains to be seen, but at the very least, there's a heaping helping of electric torque to scratch that muscle car itch. Oh, it's fast.